Hi everybody, this is Tom. I just wanted to share a quick update on the Hobbing Spindle project. Um, as you can see, there has been progress and uh, some of the milestones that, uh, that I was concerned about have been, uh, have been met reasonably well. In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the construction details and, but in particular, I wanted to do some power spanning of the bevel drive gears, uh, which I think is interesting, and I hope you think so too. Well, everything seemed to fit together pretty well. The meshing height on the bevel gear seems about right. It's a little hard to tell for sure, but it measured right when I checked it. There's a little noise there. Can't say I'm really surprised by that, but it doesn't sound too bad. So the next step here is to put the mounting holes on that plate and in the housing. And then I need to finish the housing for the bevel gear. And, um, and then make the outboard bearing support. And that's pretty much going to be that for this phase of the project. So if this thing mounts to the machine and runs reasonably well, I'm not expecting it to be uh, particularly quiet, but as long as it runs well and reliably and holds the center where it's supposed to be, um, that's going to be pretty close to success, I think. Anyway, I will uh, I will supplement this with some uh, with some still photos. You can see the arrangement here of the three cap screws. The one in the middle is a jack screw uh, to jack the bore open, and these two on the outside are clamp screws. So. Um, and that worked just exactly the way it needs to. I have to tell you, the inside bore of that uh, clamp setup there is not the best. Uh, it's not something I would hold up as a paragon of good machining, but uh, it's not too bad. And, and in the end, it doesn't really matter because I can't see it. Well, I got the, uh, the gears, the bevel gears. This is the the drive idler for the hobbing spindle. I got them um, assembled. I got to wondering whether they were really as quiet as they could be. Um, just spinning it by hand, it seemed like they were a little off. And I thought, well, maybe I better figure out, uh, figure out what the actual correct center distance for the quietest operation should be. And it just so happens I've done this before, so, uh, but I've never done it with a pair of bevel gears. So basically what I did was I set them up, I took the axle out of the, the idler axle out of the housing and mounted it to a, just a flange I had sitting around that happened to fit a, a boring tool holder. Um, and Basically, what I want to do is determine the mounting distance, which is the center, the distance between the face of one gear and the axis of the other gear, which is important for mounting bevel gears correctly. Now, when I did the calculation um, for the gears, the theoretical uh, mounting distance was 2.412 inches. And uh, when I assembled it, that's the way I made the, the um, spindle support, was for 2.412 inches. And the, it, it just seemed like I couldn't get them as quiet as I'd like them to be. Um, plus, there's been a lot of chatter on some of the other uh, channels on Facebook and YouTube about this type of bevel gear, which is the, the type with a constant tooth depth. And we've been through that in some of the other videos, and, and I think uh, we all understand how it can work. 
Uh, but to be honest, I was a little curious about how it was going to sound when I put it all together. So I thought I would do the, um, the same trick with, uh, um, what did we call it, power spanning, um, where we, uh, we mount the, the gears and drive them at a certain, uh, at kind of operating speeds and, and see, kind of try to tune it up for the right kind of noise uh, or the right, as, to be as quiet as possible with still reasonable lash and all that stuff. So anyway, the way I set this up was I, I know the diameter, the outside diameter of the gear, plus I need to make sure this is actually square. So I laid it up against the side of the gear and put the, the radius of that gear into my DRO. Um, and then I did the same thing this way. Came out this way, put the face of that gear up against that, and set the, um, the Z dimension to um, the radius of that gear. So then what I can do is start feeling around for the position that gives me the, the best overall sound. And right now I'm at 2.42, so that's about 8 thou bigger than what I had baked into the, um, the design. And that's got just a little bit of lash. That's running at 45 RPM, so that's not very fast. But I can't hear that. I can put a little bit of load on it with my fingers. Or... Can't really hear that. So that actually sounds quite a bit better, which to me means that I had the mounting distance set a little too small. Uh, so I'm going to have to do something about that. Probably uh, shim it up, maybe. Um, but I reckon that's par for the course. Now let's take it up. This this would be 165 RPM, and this is about uh, the speed that I would run the hobbing spindle at. So this is a pretty good test right here. You can hear it just a little bit. I don't know if you can hear that um, above the machine. It's making just a little bit of a rattle sound. And I'm not going to try to measure the lash. It's, uh, it's pretty small. So I think what I'm going to do, let's take it out another couple thou, 2.422, so that's 10 thou more than, than I actually have built in. That's slightly better. So 2.422, so that's 10 thou more than, uh, than what I had. So I'm going to have to mount the, the spindle carrier up 10 thou from where it is right now. So I imagine I'll be making a shim for that. Um, not the way I wanted to do it, but I probably should have done this experiment before I decided on the, the mounting distance. Um, as always, 
that's kind of the way it goes. So that's 165 RPM. Let's see if I can just put a little load on it without it starts to get a little rumble. That's my spacer clanking. That's not bad. Well, that's an update on the state of play from my shop with uh, the new hobbing spindle project. Uh, there'll be a lot more footage of the various operations that went into getting it to this point, plus uh, there's still more to go. So stay tuned. Please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. And... Uh, I'll see you next time.